Greetings and salutations, back down the shed again. A little bit of time has passed, not too much, but a little bit of time, and I've got two boot coverings. And I've automatically noticed that one of them is already starting to split. So yeah, this happens. This is why I say you need to use some like hot glue nut to reinforce. I have given these a test over some boots, but I haven't attached them to any yet. I mean, I've got an old pair of boots down the shed. They just go straight on, just like that. Fit pretty nice and tightly. Now, I don't know if gluing these on or not just yet. I'm thinking of maybe getting a rubber mat to glue it all onto, but that's something for future Simon to deal with. But for now, what I wanna do is I wanna heat gun the fuck out of these and shape them up a bit better. The foam itself has helped form it, because these were bowing out a bit like crazy. You can still see where it is at the top. That's because of the foam, how it's been kept, how it's been stored, the actual heat and stuff like that. So just get the heat gun out, heat that up, hold it in place, and that should help cure that. One thing to consider when you're working with a heat gun on foam, before you want to seal it or anything like that, you should go over the surface with a heat gun and it'll help open up all these pores. The main issue with that is that any small cuts or any of these kind of splits in that, it'll pry them open as well. So before I want to actually start filling these in, it's good to get all that stuff done out of the way. I also want to get all this done before I start hot gluing because then there's a chance that, you know, with mucking around with a heat gun after the hot glue is already in there, I can melt the hot glue. So that'll take next to no time, really. What I really want to come down and work on is I was thinking about detailing. You know, once it's of course been, you know, painted and metalized and stuff like that, you know, it's gonna look like a metal foot. How can I help sell this? And I was thinking, well, I do have some one mil craft foam. And this stuff is really good, you, know, you can cut it with scissors, you can use knives, it's insanely flexible, and of course I can just super glue it straight on. So what I was thinking of doing was basically making some maybe 10 mil or one centimeter strips. And one of the things I wanna do is maybe along these edges, add some like fake grooves, kind of like what you'd see on like a, a grill of some sort, kind of sell this idea that it's a robot. Don't know if I wanna go all the way over it or i just do the front and the back but i'm thinking do the corners first so what i might end up doing is i'll just start finding out say the center of each one of these segments and put a strip there and then you know maybe put another strip in the middle between them something to break up the monotony other thing i was thinking of doing i've got a whole load of spare leds i mean i've had these for years and i've, I've barely used them I got a whole lot of like resistors and such in here. Some a couple of big ones and a load of tiny ones. So I was thinking, how can I break this foot up? And I thought, well, maybe if I add like a fake panel, maybe on the side, and I'll mirror it because these are at the moment ambidextrous. They're they they're exactly the same, so they are mirrored and they have you know there's no distinction between the two what i was thinking of doing was basically to so it'll help me visually decide which one goes on which before i add glue on there maybe add some details on the outside if this is the left shoe maybe have something here so it, on the outside so it make it it'll break up the object it'll add some detail the, i'm going to pull the components on there before i paint it up i don't care about the color of the components showing through i want I want just something to break up that plain surface. I was thinking of doing something on the toe here as well, but that's, I'll, I'll think about that. I really want to add some components. And the other thing I've got is I've got a ton of like computer screws and pop-ups and mounting screws and all sorts. And I was thinking of adding a few of these to make it look like it's like a service hatch on the plate. Like this is something you get to on the foot. The, the technician will open up and find something in there. It's just to add another element, breaks up the plainness of it. Now, the good thing is because I've got so much of these screws, that's a detail I can mirror across the rest of the design. So, you know, I can add all these little tiny screws in at places, you know, add some paneling to make it look like there's an access hatch, stuff like that. I do want to get some like, um, like some small bolts, stuff like that, some actual physical hardware. I've also noticed this little ding on the shoe and I'm going to keep it. I'm not going to putty that out. That looks a really natural kind of ding. 
And I want to try and add some of that detailing in before I seal. Adding the sealant will actually protect the foam. So if I want to add some deep grooves now, I'll probably have to do that before I seal it. Now that's also the time where I'm going to be puttying in all these areas and sanding them down. But I think I want to get the detailing done first because I can cover some of these crimes. And yeah, if I add some of this foam over a crack like that, that'll actually help hold it together. So that'll actually give it a lot more reinforcing as well as the hot glue enforcing in the inside. So let's get to it.
So yeah, that was a long one, and uh, whew, I've got a few things done, but man, I've still got a lot to do in this. So as you can see, I started working on these grill pits, and I'm kind of really happy with how they're, they're turning out. So I'm, I'm tempted to just eyeball most of these, you know, you know, just break these lines up a bit. I really kind of like how that turned out. In hindsight, maybe I should have turned some of these in a different direction, but um, you know, it's... It's just something to break up the image. It's not supposed to have any function. It's just one of those things that if someone glances down, it just adds a little bit of something to make it pop. Same with these grills. They have no real purpose or function or anything like that. It's just something to add a bit of interest. I just kit bash this together. I'm not working off a reference. Uh, I'm just literally going, okay, what would be interesting? And I'm glad I kind of like used a variety of different sizes to the shapes. It's, it still has a little bit of a mechanical order to it. You know, it being a robot and all, you know, you don't want it to be too chaotic. But yeah, but just adding some different sizes, different placement, it just adds an interesting visual element. I accidentally did it on this one, but that's fine. It was a happy little accident where I actually put the wrong screw in. I was just going to have them all uniform the same, but I was like, I do want to have this robot look a bit weathered. Maybe it's not all the original parts. I do want to add a little bit of rust and some weathering to it because I love rust and weathering. It just adds so much character. Not having it be perfectly, maybe these are an aftermarket addition. I have found this really funky looking screw there so I whack that one on and it's all super glued into place so that should be fine. So that being said I'm actually going to do the grey primer and graphite rub on this because I want to have that metallic look but I don't want it to be shiny. Again you know it's I'm thinking this this guy isn't new. He's going to be well traveled because I, I find that more interesting personally and I think that's going to be a more interesting character. By next time we work on these boots, I'll have all these detailing done, like how I've done here. I've, I'll just work on these in my own spare time, and I'll think about if I want to do any other detailing. If I can find some more components, like if I've got some lying around in a bucket somewhere, maybe just grab some of those screws and just, you know, maybe add them in here somewhere. I don't particularly want to add too much riveting on the feet. I'll, I'll have a think about that. I mean, I've got so many damn screws down there, I could you know, put like 10, 15, 20 per feet and I'll probably still have hundreds left. We'll see. So if you like this video, please click like, share and subscribe, comment down below, hit the bell for notifications. If you want me to extrapolate a bit more on some of these techniques, please feel free to comment. If you have any tips to help me improve, please let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.